first one. He's just come back from Sydney after winning the best of the fest at the Sydney Comedy Festival. Please welcome to the stage, Guy Montgomery. <laughs> Thank you so much. So I'm actually, um, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a tremendous ally in my day-to-day -day life. I, in my day-to-day -day life, I actually like to think of myself as a feminist first, a comedian second, yeah. Um, probably a misogynist third. <laughs> no, I tease, I tease, I am actually a huge ally. I'm, I'm, I'm such an ally, so do you, do you guys all know about the Bechdel test? Do you know about this? If you don't know, it's a test in cinema. It tests the representation of women in film for a film to pass the Bechdel test. It has to feature two characters who are women, who are named, having a conversation about something that isn't a man. So, you know, shopping, whatever. <laughs> and, and even with these simple parameters, it's a surprisingly difficult test for these movies to pass. And I'm one of the only guys I know who every single day, I set out to make sure my day passes the Bechdel test. <laughs> can, can you conceive of how hard that might be for a fella? That means every day I wake up, first thing, I gotta try and think of somewhere that two women might be, you know? And once I got it in my head, I gotta go there, I gotta see the woman, I gotta get close enough to hear them talking, hear their names, and hear them discuss something which isn't a man, which is difficult these days, because these broads are boy crazy! <laughs> but the other day I was in the park, yeah, and I, was, I could hear these two women talking, and the first one says, she says, hey, Carolyn, and the second woman says, yes, Susan. And so here I am thinking, <laughs> bingo, I... <laughs> But then Susan says, she says, can you see that man in the bushes over there? Yeah. <laughs> Just my luck. So I gotta come out of the bushes dressed in full camouflage, mind you, <laughs> saying, ladies, ladies, can't you see I'm helping? <laughs> I'm an out, you know. I don't know what's going on with the state of society these days. You could literally be screaming at a woman that you're a feminist and still be the bad guy, yeah. <laughs> You laugh, but it was a pretty long day for me. I, I had to go in a police car, um, <laughs> but it, I was, it was two female officers, which, you know, that's all right by me, because their names were printed on their uniforms, so <laughs> not a wasted day yet, you know, and we're, we're getting in the car, and they're riding up front, and, and I'm in the back, and I'm okay with that. <laughs> and, you know, and we're driving along, and they're talking all right, they're nattering, but I cannot hear a word they're saying, so I'm banging on the device, you know. <laughs> A lot of people talking about the glass ceiling. Who's talking about the plexiglass partition? <laughs> it's blocking an ally. You know. <laughs> I did. I so I did. I, I had a. I did go to court. Uh, but I got. I had an attorney appointed. A woman. I got a woman attorney, and it was a lady judge too. I knew both their names. Very intelligent woman. You know. And uh, what do you think they chose to talk about? <laughs> I can't catch a damn break out there. <laughs> no, that's actually very silly. I, uh, <laughs> I don't have to do that anymore because I can pass the Bechdel test just by waking up. I live with two women. I live with my girlfriend, Chelsea, and our daughter, my stepdaughter, Olive, who is uh, seven. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's nice, but I do feel like I don't have a huge amount of power in the house sometimes. Like, I never get final say, you know? Like, last week, as a, as a for instance, last week at the school morning, Olive comes into our bedroom to wake us up just before seven, and she's patting her tummy like this, and she's sort of smiling, and she says, oh, no, I can't, um, I can't go to school today. I've got a sore tummy. But she's a bit chipper when she says it like that. And I say, well, I, no, I think you're going to go to school today. And then Olive said, no, no, it's really sore. And I say, well, you know, sit on the toilet, have some toast. You, you're going to school. <laughs> but then Chelsea steps in and says, well, no, you know, look, she's told us she's got a sore tummy twice. She's probably got quite a sore tummy. It's OK, Olive, you don't have to go to school today. And I say, yeah, OK, that's OK. That's fine. That's your prerogative. That's your decision. But Olive, <laughs> I've got to tell you, how long's a school day? What, six? Seven hours? 
You're going to pretend to have a sore tummy for six or seven hours? That is a long, boring-ass day. I've lived that life. You'll wish you were at school. This is a disaster for you. I'm going to watch you like a hawk. I've got eyes on you, you know. <laughs> As it turns out, Olive was pretty sick. But, yeah, I mean... <laughs> how the hell am I meant to know that? I didn't... I didn't know that. I'm just a guy. <laughs> Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you. I'm Guy Montgomery. Good night.